beautiful waitress commits a crime that could ruin her life, but a dashing lawyer comes to her aid and vows to keep her secret safe. In 1960, Hugh Hefner opened the first Playboy Club in Chicago, an exclusive establishment where rich men enjoy drinks and entertainment while beautiful women in revealing clothing, called bunnies, cater to them. One night, Katie greets club keyholder attorney Nick Dalton at the door, and he hands her his key. On stage, the lawyer's girlfriend and bunny, Carol Lynn, performs, while newbie Maureen watches in awe. Alice interrupts her colleague and tells her the boss won't like seeing her standing around. Maureen asks why Carol gets to perform on stage, and Alice says it's because she's the very first bunny. Brenda joins them and implies that it won't take long for the newbie to steal the spotlight with her good looks. Suddenly, Clyde Hill comes up to Maureen and asks her to dance, which she gladly accepts. On the dance floor, the older man gets too handsy with the bunny, so she politely pushes him away and dances with another man. Carol spots Maureen and is visibly annoyed that she's getting attention. Meanwhile, Nick spots the newbie and asks club manager Billy Rosen who she is. Miffed, the manager approaches Maureen and tells her to get back to work. Moments later, the lawyer introduces himself to the beautiful woman. She offers him cigarettes, but since she's all out of the kind that he likes, she says she'll head to the stockroom and be right back. After Carol finishes her song, she speaks with her boyfriend and congratulates him on his latest case. In the stockroom, Clyde follows the unaware Maureen. At the bar, Nick wonders what's taking the bunny so long. Meanwhile, the pushy man won't take no for an answer and moves to kiss the woman. She pushes him away, but she falls to the floor as she tries to escape, and the man gets on top of her. Fortunately, the lawyer enters the stockroom, sees the deplorable act, and grabs the man off Maureen. After a brief scuffle, Clyde resumes his assault on the lady, but she's able to kick his neck with her heel, severing an artery, and the man perishes. Horrified by the events, the woman says they should call the authorities. However, Nick explains that although most people know the man as Clyde Hill, a respectable businessman, his real name is Bruno Bianchi, head of the notorious mob group The Outfit. The lawyer is aware that they'll be disposed of if anyone finds out what they did. While he figures out their next step, the woman wipes her bloody hands on her clothes, picks up Bruno's key, and places it under her clothes. Nick grabs car keys from Billy's drawer, and later, they load the body into the trunk. By the river, they weigh down Bruno's corpse with chains before rolling it into the water. Back in the club, Max, the bartender, expresses his annoyance at having to watch his girlfriend, Janie, get hit on by the club's patrons every night. Billy tells the bartender to tell Janie she'll be on cigarette duty for the rest of the night because he doesn't know where Maureen is. Later, in Nick's apartment, the newbie bunny sees his photos with influential people, and she marvels at the sight of his impressive home. The man tells her to wash up, so she asks him to help her unzip the back of her costume. While standing in front of the mirror, Maureen realizes she dropped Bruno's key, since it isn't under her clothes anymore. Concurrently, the lawyer calls the manager and says he borrowed the car for a bunny emergency. He says that he and Maureen left the club together, and asks his friend not to mention anything to Carol. In the club bathroom, Max and Janie make love. He asks her to marry him, but the lady turns him down. In the dressing room, Carol learns that Maureen ended her shift at around the same time she noticed Nick leaving, and thinks they might have left together. Alice remarks that having a relationship while working at the Playboy Club can be challenging, and shares that her husband has a difficult time accepting her line of work. After the shift, Alice's husband, Sean, picks her up, and she informs him that she made $143 that night. He asks how long they can keep their little operation going, and she says until she slips up. In the apartment, Maureen finishes washing up and joins the lawyer in the kitchen while wearing one of his shirts. He hands her the money he found in Bruno's suit and advises her to leave town for her own safety. She refuses the money and says she's worked too hard to get where she is and that she can take care of herself. Seconds later, Carol arrives, so Nick tells the newbie bunny to hide. The girlfriend gives her lover a kiss but stops when she spots Maureen's clothes on the counter. Hurt, she heads to the closet to grab her things, but to her surprise, she finds the woman hiding. Nick and Maureen try to explain their situation, but the furious woman doesn't want to hear their excuses. Soon, Maureen returns to the Playboy Mansion, where she lives with the other women. Brenda deduces that she was with Nick, since she's wearing one of his shirts. The next day, the lawyer arrives at the club to return the car. When he enters the manager's office, he hears Billy's phone call with Clyde Hale's wife. After the call, he admits to not telling the woman that her husband was at the club last night 
valuing the keyholder's privacy. As Nick leaves the establishment, he runs into Carol, and he reiterates that nothing happened between him and Maureen. He asks her out to dinner, but she turns him down. In the bunny meeting, Billy asks the woman if any of them waited on Clyde Hill last night, but Maureen chooses not to speak up. Later, the manager catches Carol snooping through his files and reprimands her. The woman explains that she's always seen herself in a managerial position, but the man chooses to fire her for stepping out of line. So, Carol leaves the club and heads to the Playboy Mansion. In the courthouse, John Bianchi, Bruno's son, happens upon Nick and tells him that his father's been missing since last night, and he needs his help. When the lawyer says he no longer works for their family, John reminds him that his dream of becoming state's attorney depends on their family support. In the dressing room, the bunnies are informed of the after party at the mansion after their shift, but Maureen doesn't want to go. Alice said she'd go if she could, but husbands aren't allowed to attend. Brenda asks her when they'll get to meet her husband, but Alice just says that her spouse doesn't want to see her working. Meanwhile, Billy receives a call from Hugh Hefner, telling him to rescind Carol's termination. Then, the woman appears at his door and gives him a knowing wave. Soon, Carol enters the dressing room to inform the ladies that she's now a bunny mother, much like a house mother in a sorority. She's asked Pearl to make their costumes even more appealing to the male gaze. She adds that bunnies can no longer date or slip through the back with key holders, while glaring at Maureen. The newbie bunny speaks to Nick and says she thinks Carol knows what they did, but he assures her that she doesn't, and tells her to pretend last night never happened. So, she loosens up and joins the other bunnies on the dance floor, drawing ire from Carol. Unbeknownst to her, Gus Bianchi and Leo Bianchi spot her from above, aware that she danced with Bruno last night. Later, Nick gives Carol a pair of earrings as an apology gift, yet the woman doesn't accept his reasons for last night. She says she knows he wants to be the kind of man every man wants to be, and that he'll do anything to ascend from being Bianchi's henchman to state's attorney. Moments later, Carol calls the newbie to the back office. There, she tells Maureen that she noticed that she's had a rough first week at work, and thinks she should undergo training. The newbie thinks she just wants to keep her enemies close, but the bunny mother says she means well. She also warns Maureen to stay away from Nick because he has some very dangerous and powerful friends. As she's leaving, Leo intercepts the newbie and asks her about Clyde. Maureen says she left the club last night with Nick. When she senses that the man isn't buying her story, she flirts with him to get his guard down, until he finally allows her to pass. At the bar, Max tells Janie to quit her job. The woman doesn't want to, repeats that she can't marry him, but says she can't say why. Then, the bartender answers the ringing phone and hands it to Nick. Gus tells the lawyer that John wishes to speak to him in the car behind the club. At the coat check, Alice calls Sean and informs him that she's made $100 and it isn't 11pm yet. Sean worries that they might be criminals and the woman says that in most states, they are. Their call is interrupted when Nick asks for his coat. In the apartment, Joshua joins Sean, hands him a beer, and assures the man they won't get caught. Outside, Maureen tells the lawyer that a mob guy asked her about Bruno, but that she told him she went home with Nick last night. The woman wonders if she should have just left the city like he said, but the lawyer thinks she should stay, so as not to arouse suspicion. Seconds later, John's car drives up, and to play up their alibi, they share a kiss so the mobster sees them. Eventually, Nick enters the car, and John says they still haven't found his father, but that he was seen dancing with Maureen. The lawyer insists that the woman came home with him. When John asks him to help them find Bruno, the lawyer refuses. So, the mobster remarks that his path to becoming state's attorney just got easier with Bruno gone. But, Nick counters that John's path to becoming the outfit's head guy also got a lot easier. At the mansion, Janie and Brenda encourage Maureen to join the party, and she eventually agrees. Meanwhile, Alice arrives at Sean's apartment, where the Mattachine Society of Chicago is gathered. The society is an organization that fights for the rights of people who are attracted to the same gender, revealing that the money she and Sean are making is for a good cause. There she meets another member, Sally. By the river, a man finds Bruno's club key that Maureen dropped. That night, the man who found the key takes a friend and hopes it'll be enough to get them inside. In the dressing room, the bunnies learn that Hugh Hefner is auditioning five Chicago bunnies to be on the cover of the magazine. Maureen and Brenda are excited about the opportunity, but Alice says she can't participate because her husband won't allow her. Janie also says she won't audition, confusing her colleagues, but the woman refuses to elaborate why. On stage, Carol performs an upbeat song and dance number, while Nick watches from the crowd. Moments later, while speaking with Billy, Nick expresses his desire to win Carol back. When the manager says it'll be a tall task, especially after Maureen, the lawyer reiterates that nothing happened between them. 
Then, the manager informs him that word on the street is that Bruno Bianchi's dead. While that means good things for the city in general, he fears that the power shift within the mob might affect his club's business, especially since John's already frequenting the establishment. Then, the mobster gestures the lawyer over to his table. By the entrance, the two men's ploy worked, and the key allows them access. Meanwhile, Maureen sees Clyde Hill's name on the board by the door, reminding her of the harrowing experience. She then sees the two men who entered using the dead man's key. Concurrently, John, once again, asks Nick to help find whoever's responsible for his father's disappearance. However, the lawyer reminds him that he's worked off his debt to their family, and he'd rather not get involved in the mob boss's search, especially when he's about to announce his candidacy for state's attorney. Maureen interrupts the conversation and asks, asks to speak to Nick. She points out the two men who got in the club using Clyde Hill's key, and he asks how they got it. The bunny admits she found the key in the stockroom and must have dropped it by the river. Concerned, the lawyer says they need to get the key before the men speak to the authorities about where they found it. They eventually decide that the lawyer takes the name off the board, while she retrieves the key from the men. On his way to the board, Nick runs into Carol and she congratulates him on his filing for candidacy. He tells her that he wants her back, but the woman admits she still doesn't believe nothing happened between him and Maureen. Meanwhile, the bunny speaks with the trespassers and asks to see their key, which one man hands over. She tells them that she knows the key isn't theirs, and says she can't let them leave peacefully without informing management, so the trespassers leave quietly to her relief. Then she heads to the board to see if Nick's done his objective, but he sees him speaking with Carol, so she decides to remove the name herself. When she turns around, she's face to face with John, who says he knows she danced with his father that night. She feigns ignorance about the man's whereabouts, so the mobster advises her to stay wary of Nick because he's a heartbreaker. At their apartment, Sean reminds Alice she needs to take Wednesday night off so she can be home when his parents come over for dinner. She says she can't because she thought they were visiting next week, but he reminds her that they need to do it so that his parents continue to believe that they're in a legitimate marriage and avoid outing his true preference for men. In the mansion bathroom, Maureen places the key on the counter while remembering Bruno's death. Unfortunately, Brenda walks in on her and asks why she has the key. The newbie says she found it on the showroom floor and is planning to use it as a pendant to wear for her covergirl audition. The next morning, Carol barges into the girls' room and hands them each a training manual. She emphasizes that Maureen needs the training the most since she's the newest. Before she leaves, she sees the costume the newbie wore the night of Bruno's death and reprimands her for taking it home with her. Maureen tries to convince her that she'll take it back later today, scared that the bunny mother might see the bloodstains. But Carol insists on taking it back to the club herself, much to the newbie's horror. Meanwhile, Nick pays Mayor Daly a visit to ask for his blessing for his candidacy. However, the mayor indirectly asks for a bribe in exchange for his support. During bunny training, Maureen impresses Carol when she's the only one who answers the questions regarding the information in the manual. At the bar, Max encourages Janie to enter the competition and suggests she submit the picture of her in a yellow bikini that he took last summer. However, she's adamant about not participating. After the training, Pearl tells the bunny mother that she can't save the newbie's costume and will have to make her a new one. Carol is shocked when she sees the blood on the outfit. Later, Carol speaks to Maureen about the blood, so the newbie makes up a story about a vagrant assaulting her while she was on a smoke break outside the club. She says the vagrant punched her, which caused her nose to bleed, hence the stains. She adds that Nick ran the homeless man off and took her to the apartment to clean her up, and she insists that nothing happened between them. Carol seemingly believes her story and commends her for doing well at bunny training. Elsewhere, Nick pays John a visit and says he'll help find Bruno. In exchange, he wants one of the mobster's sports cars. Later that day, the lawyer returns to the mayor's office to drop off a gift. When Daly opens the box, he finds the keys to the sports car and a note from Nick. In the dressing room, Carol presents Maureen with her newly dyed red shoes to match her bloody costume, which she had pearl dye red as well. That night, Alice takes Maureen's pictures for her application for the cover. The woman seems clearly conflicted trying to hide her attraction to her beautiful friend. Meanwhile, Carol Carol sees the flowers from Nick in her office, and he insists that he wants her back. The two then share a kiss and make love. The next day, the bunny mother announces the finalists for the cover girl audition, which includes Katie, Brenda, Maureen, and Janie, who's shocked because she never submitted an application. During the interview with Hugh Hefner, the other women explain why they deserve to be a cover girl, while Janie explains that the other girls deserve it more than she does. She takes a peek at the pictures on Hugh's desk, sees her yellow bikini pictures, and deduces that Max submitted them. 
In the dressing room, Nick approaches Maureen and tells her not to worry about Bruno and reveals that he used to be the family's fixer. Carol arrives and interrupts their conversation. She hands her boyfriend the evening newspaper with the headline officially announcing his candidacy. When he leaves, the bunny mother reminds the newbie to stay away from her man. Later, Carol announces Janie as the winner of the CoverGirl competition, much to her horror and everyone else's disappointment. Again, she says she can't do it before barging over to the bar to confront Max. When the man asks why she's so against doing the cover, she finally admits that she's still married to an unhinged man whom she's been hiding from. He doesn't know where she is, but he has a subscription to the magazine, which will make it easy for him to find her. During the dinner with Sean's parents, Alice is horrified to learn that her father-in-law has a key to the club and invites them all to go. In the club, Alice's co-workers subtly make fun of her, knowing her in-laws have no idea she works there. Meanwhile, John speaks to Nick and says it's been a week since his father's disappearance, so he plans to spend more time at the club to keep investigating. As the men shake hands, one of the bunnies snap a picture, so Sean buys the picture and approaches the lawyer. He introduces himself and hands the photo, warning Nick that him shaking hands with a Bianchi might not be the best look, especially during the night his candidacy was announced. Nick thanks him and accepts his business card in case he needs Sean's PR services. Later, Carol informs Maureen that since Janie backed out, she'll be the cover girl. In the mansion, the newbie mentions that she only wants to be on the cover because she hopes her father sees her and finds her. In the club, John orders Gus to dig up more information on Maureen. In the bathroom, the newbie hides Bruno's key inside a tub of ice cream. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.